Hello, I am Matt Williamson at Williamson NFL. Do me a big favor, go to YouTube and hit my page there and uh, get those numbers up. That'd be huge. Hope everyone's doing well. Again, slow time, but things are trickling in. Um, not too long until we have rookie mini camps and mini camps and things of that nature. So those are right around the corner. We have schedule release coming up about a, you know, half a week from now or so as well. All good, but we are here to talk wide receivers. And I'm officially concerned, I think, about Steelers wide receiver room. Um, and uh, someone on the YouTube mentioned said, hey, can you compare the Steeler receiver room to the other 31 in the league? I'm like, that's a great idea. So I thought about it. And then I realized there aren't many I that would be, I mean, the answer would be pretty short. Like, it's bottom five. I mean, it's bad. So I took it to a new new level. And I decided, let's take a different approach, and let's talk about number one receivers. Now, I've been telling people that will listen, whoever will listen, that there aren't 32 number one receivers. I mean, there just aren't. So I said, let's put it on paper and started with this. What is Matt's definition of a number one wide receiver? It's not you catch the most passes on that on your team, you know. No, I made a very simple definition. A wide receiver one is someone that doesn't have to be schemed up to consistently win versus man or zone. Antonio Brown, you know what I mean? Like, we don't have to always put you in motion and use run pick plays or you're a zone killer or, you know what I mean? And that definition, there aren't many number one wide receivers. And we'll get to Pickens and we'll get to the Steelers here in a minute. But I came up with nine names that I said, yes, this guy is a number one NFL wide receiver. Only nine. Now, I have a second category, too. Tyree Kill, no-brainer. Jamar Chase, no-brainer. Adams with the Raiders, still very much so. I mean, that guy is kind of the definition of it. He's getting doubled. He's still going to get to the bucket and get hoops. C.D. Lamb. A.J. Brown. Justin Jefferson, probably maybe the best receiver in the league. Brandon Ayuk, yes, he's to that level. And then there were two that I said yes, but I was a little torn on. One was Amon Ross St. Brown, who just got number one receiver money. And the only reason I was just stinging him a little compared to those other guys is they do a great job with scheme with him. You know, I mean, they really do scheme him up well, but he has enough of his own acumen as well. And then the last one I wouldn't have thought would still be on this list, but last year, Mike Evans was pretty awesome. And he has been the definition of a number one receiver and a Hall of Famer and showed no signs of decline. So I'm like, okay, I came up with nine number one receivers. No Steelers, of course, even considered. Now I have a list of 21, maybe, could be, is what I called them. And some of them are young. They just need to prove it. Some of them are a little old and reprove it. Some of them just aren't quite there. So I just went team by team. These are in no order whatsoever. Waddle with the Dolphins. Garrett Wilson, I think, absolutely will be. But this time next year, I think he'll be in the yes category. Amari Cooper was close to me because, by definition, doesn't have to be schemed up to consistently win versus man or zone. Cooper's probably a Yes. I just didn't, I didn't quite put him there because I don't know that he's scary dynamic enough that defensive coordinators don't sleep the night before they play Amari Cooper. You know what I mean? Nico Collins is becoming in that neighborhood. Stefan Diggs lived in the yes category, but last year, eh, he did not perform like a number one, nor was he used like a number one. Ridley, I'm going to say probably never will get there. Hopkins once was DeAndre Hopkins, and age is factored in here. Pittman, really high volume dude, definitely gets open versus man and zone, but another one that I wasn't like, eh, you know, blows my doors off. I did put the three rookies in this category. Neighbors is his first one. Um, Devonta Smith made this category. He doesn't. Like Waddle, I mean, he obviously benefits from a number one on the other side. So there's a little bit of, I haven't had to see it. Terry McLaurin still is right on that cusp for me as well of better than people think. Um, 
can certainly create space and separation on his own consistently, no matter what the coverages are. I put a Dunze on there. I mentioned another rookie. Keenan Allen, great, great route runner, slightly declining, never was a deep threat. So, you know, that, that was part of it too. And I almost defined a number one receiver as has to be able to attack all areas of the field, but I didn't. And Allen would fall short on that one because he's not a burner. DJ Moore is more of a not quite. I think Chris Olave could get there. Debo Samuels and not quite. I mean, he's a zone killer. Cup and Nakua, really good players. But I don't know if they'd be really good players on Matt Canada's offense and not the Rams scheme, to be very honest with you. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is there and will be there, but I at least want to see the guy play football. And then two others I wanted to bring up. DK Metcalf. He's been A couple of these names have been rumored to the Steelers. I mean, who knows? Rumors are rumors. But he's a little one-dimensional for me in order to put him in the a number one receiver. Um, not a great route runner, downfield mostly. And then Drake London. Drake London, I think, could be there. And I bring him up because of the Falcon connection. And frankly, I think London is better than Pickens. I mean, I, I really do. And probably doesn't get the credit you know he deserves for what he brings to the table and what he potentially could be. I mean, that was a top 10 pick. Um, so those are the guys and subject to change. Um, now how does that translate to the Steelers room? Well, let's say about bet online first, bet online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB golf, NBA, and NHL playoffs, all the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams, get the latest odds and lines including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. So we just defined and laid out what truly is a number one receiver. Could George Pickens be that guy? I think he's close to being on the could be, would be kind of list. Could he get to the top list? I mean, that's an elite company. Maybe. I don't think that's crazy to project it is crazy. I also think I can win with two twos, which is Pickens and Deontay, you know, basically. So I look at Pickens as a two, you know, if, if that's a one and that's a wannabe one, he's in the tier right below those guys. And I'm going to call those guys wide receiver twos. Now his potential could be to get higher, of course. And I mentioned London. Could he be the number one, like Atlanta used London? And remember, I'm going to say this 8,000 times between now and opening day, but Arthur Smith used the smallest percentage of 11 personnel in the entire league with one back, one tight end, three receivers. I bet it won't be as small as it was in Atlanta, but there won't be as many receivers on the field. So that has to be part of the equation. So, okay, let's Pickens right today is a two. And if I had two twos, I'd be pretty comfortable. If I had Pickens as a two and anyone I mentioned in the first segment, I'd be, you know, is static with, with the weapons this team has. And so if they could land someone I mentioned or someone of that ilk, that would be re re you know, remarkable, but they're not going to be cheap. Okay. Pickens is a two. We've defined that. We've defined what a one is. The rest of this team, I think optimistically, this is projecting and very, very optimistic. I think Roman Wilson will be a three. A vertical slot, a guy that trots out there with three receiver sets, and you're happy about it. You know, like Allen Robinson wasn't a three. You know what I mean? He he was your he was the Steelers three. He just signed somewhere yesterday. They're probably looking at him as a four. You know what I mean? Wilson Roman, we hope is a three. I don't think he. I mean, he's light years away from a one. He's light years away from a two. 
But if he could be a three this year, that would be a very successful pick. So that leaves us with a one or without a one with a two and upside, maybe a three. And I think everybody else is a four. You know, like if, if I'm building a team, I have a bunch of fours on this team and they just keep adding them. And we've talked that a lot, you know, but in case you don't know the names, it's Calvin Austin, it's Van Jefferson, Scotty Miller, who was the newest addition, Quez Watkins. Those guys are all fours to me. Now, they also have Marquise Calloway. People don't even remember that. And he's done some things in the league. I thought Des Fitzpatrick was impressive in camp, and I'm glad he's coming back. And Denzel Mims is a former early second round pick that is height, weight, speed. I mean, he's tall, he's fast, he's outside the numbers. Maybe his career revitalizes itself. But I, so where does that leave you? You know, I mean, like if we, if we look at Atlanta, at least they had Pitt and Fryermuth is good. I like Fryermuth. I would extend him in the next couple of months. I think his role is going to grow dramatically. Like, I bet he's being underdrafted in fantasy. Like, I think there are big plans for him. And there will be a lot of other tight ends on the field. None of them are dynamic field stretchers or weapons, though. I mean, they're not bad players, but they're not dynamic. And Kyle Pitts was dynamic. I mean, down Kyle Pitts ran deep vertical routes. I mean, he vertical is what I'm talking about with Pitts. So, okay, they only had London in Atlanta. But they had Pitts, who was a threat. I mean, he is, even though he's been not as quite as advertised, drafted as high as he was, he was a threat the teams rolled coverages to and feared. More so than Fryermuth has been at any point of his career. And Fryermuth can't get to, in my opinion, can't get to the vertical threat that's, that Pitts presents. Fryermuth could be a very good player. I think he could be a pro bowler, but different types. So that doesn't leave you much. I mean, it leaves you a two with some upside, hopefully a three, a gaggle of fours, which I bet half those guys make the team and the other half are gone. Maybe they yield you a pick. But this is time to be concerned. I mean, again, I mean, I have praised Omar Khan and his team building up and down, you know, and I urge you to go listen to yesterday's podcast when we talk about how things have changed in the offensive line drafting room, you know, situation over these last two years. It's startling. It's one of the more startling podcasts I've done. Um, but I bet, again, if Omar's sitting here and I gave him true serum and I thought said, after the Deontay trade, do you th- did you misread? That's not exactly the word. Did you misread the wide receiver market? And I bet he'd say, yeah, yeah, a little bit. You know, like I thought, by mid-May, early May, I would have had Deontay's replacement. You know, I had a lot of talks and things haven't gone my way that, you know, at that position. So now there are, well, will be opportunities. You know, Joe Hayden was released, released late. There could be a trade in mind. Teams, people want to get traded. T. Higgins, T. Higgins once traded. He, t- he also was a just missed for me. I think T. Higgins is a, is a great example of a true two which is what I think Pickens is right now. Um, But two twos would be great. Um, Even a true three would go a long way. And that was not Tyler Boyd, folks. I think Tyler Boyd would be very much in that four conversation. So who knows? I mean, Robert Woods is a name they could get for super cheap. Maybe he'd be the best of the fours at this stage of his career. Maybe he's a true three. Maybe, maybe. I mean, so I'm not saying they're desperate, but they're just throwing a lot of stuff at the fan and hoping one of these fours turns into a three. I don't think any of it. And unfortunately, they're probably going to be have to use as a two. And uh, end your weekend or end your week and lend the weekend with a terrible note. What if you lose your two, which is being cast as a one? And by that, I mean Pickens. Imagine this receiver room, if he misses a series, let alone a game or extended time. Then it's easily, easily, easily the worst receiver room in the league. I mean, I'm close. I mean, they've got guys giving you know, nobody's threatening, you know? So, it's almost time to be concerned. All right, guys, take care.